In March of 2022, it became obvious that Starlink had started to enable this roaming capability and in fact added it to their terms of use, stating that yes, you have a primary service location, but as you move, they will try to provide service, giving those that are actually in that location primary service though. So I wanted to test to see how well it works, how fast I can make it work in a remote location, and just how it compares to cellular service in a given remote area. So for this test, we're gonna be taking a look at just how long it takes for me to park, set up my Starlink dish, and then get internet service pretty much in the middle of nowhere. So the test will begin, park, and let's go. <clears throat> So in my case, we have the hatchback. We'll break out the Starlink dish. We have ours on magnets. And as you can see, uh, it's a little cold out, so my hydraulics aren't working as good as they should. Put the Starlink dish on the roof of the car. It's already paint facing mostly north. I do wanna Fix this wire real quick. Be a little bit more graceful. Okay, there we go. The Starlink dish is up. We're now going to power on the inverter. So at this point right now, the Starlink dish is going to be um, getting power. Um, it's gonna run through its kind of preliminary processes here. And then it's going to go flat. It'll align itself with where it's at, kind of knowing where north is, and then it will connect and face somewhat north uh, to connect to the satellites. That's kind of how this whole process here works. I'm waiting for the space internet to show up. The uh, Wi-Fi signal is not quite there yet, uh, but you can see the Starlink dish is now flat. It's starting to orient itself online. So at this point, I do believe we are connected to the internet. So let's go ahead and let's say, open up radar scope. Seeing where I'm at, load up a radar. And we have data. So it has officially connected and it still hasn't quite oriented itself. It should do that here in a second. And once it does so, that's when it'll have uh, the best service. Oh, and it's uh, turning the disc right now and it's about to go facing north. There it is. And just like that, um, the Starlink dish is now fully in place. Um, so we had data before this, but now it's completely set up. And so you can see it took about five minutes for it to go from in the trunk of my car to perfectly aligned and now connecting to satellites in the northern sky. Uh, we were actually able to get data much faster than that though, and it really just shows you how quick and easy uh, the Starlink system is. Um, whether it's setting up remotely or on a car or something like that, it's something that can be done really, really quite easily. And I'm just thinking of, as a person that works in the media, as a person that has to deal with natural disasters pretty often, being able to set up a command post, being able to set up a, a live shot for a TV st station, or being able to set up communications directly when it comes to working in, say, maybe an EOC, an emergency operations center, having internet that fast, no matter where you are, that is a huge, huge thing. And uh, this is really just gonna change the way I think that everything is done. What you can see is roaming is uh, set to true. Before we get to the testing portion of this, I do want to point out that this area I am working in is technically covered by Starlink, although it is at capacity. No new customers can be added until 2023 or later, according to Starlink. I just want to make that clear before we start getting into the testing portion of this video. All right, so for the test of my current um, 4G LTE with Verizon, compared to Starlink, I do have my cell phone booster on and the wireless modem uh, for Starlink right inside there. Uh, you can see we do have um, our WeBoost um, booster kind of going here. All signals are green and we are using kind of the um, advanced antenna uh, for this, kind of the big, the big honking dude. And 
so um, to begin, we will do our Verizon test right now. Okay, so we'll call it a 15 megabit per second down, a 10 megabit per second up. That is uh, with Verizon 4G LTE. Now we're going to turn on my Wi-Fi and we're going to connect to Starlink. We got Starlink going. See a vast improvement over um, Verizon. Call it a 80, say an 81 megabit per second down, and still about a 9 megabit per second up, so not terrible. Stepping outside of the car without the enhancement of the cell phone booster, you can see it does take a dramatic hit on 4G LTE. And meanwhile, stepping outside of the car with Starlink, with the Wi-Fi connected into the inside of the car, you can see the numbers are down a bit, but still very, very strong. And you can see just like that, we're getting some stellar numbers. Uh, ping in the mid 50 millisecond range, but look at that download, 115. Wow. Upload uh, tends to always be an issue with Starlink. Um, I've commented on this quite a bit uh, in past videos. Um, it's definitely not, you know, game breaking in terms of people that, you know, what this is really targeting. If you don't have great internet service, uh, this could be a great benefit to you, period. Uh, but a six megabit per second upload, not great, but um, hey, for being where I am right now, I will take it. Um, technically, that number is worse than the 4G LTE number I had here, but the download is far superior. So right now we're running it with the uh, Starlink dish on the roof of my car. We've got my laptop here. We're currently downloading uh, Call of Duty, testing out some of the internet stuff right now to see how well all that works. Um, yeah, we're just kind of monitoring things. Uh, meanwhile, kind of keeping an eye on the northern lights. I think the clouds are going to really be an issue tonight, so I don't think we'll get too much of that tonight. But hey, at least we're testing out Starlink to see if that works. Um, but again, right now we are updating uh, on my computer just fine. Things seem to be working, as you would expect. I'm able to get on the internet and things like that. We're also using my phone right here, just kind of monitoring some of the uh, Starlink stats and things. You can see, you know, we're now up for 43 minutes. Uh, down times are all the same. We have not had any changes there. Latency remains pretty strong. And it's continuing to download the um, game there. So we're getting the spikes in download. And uh, right now we're still cruising along. Let's go ahead and pop up a YouTube video. The YouTube video popped up just fine. Very snappy. Stow it. And then, yes. So that'll be it for tonight here in the middle of nowhere. That's your Starlink for the day. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this video interesting, feel free to subscribe for more. I plan on doing more Starlink content in the future, including using Starlink to actually go storm chasing. That I think is going to be really awesome. Subscribe for more content, subscribe for any sort of weird stuff I post on this channel. Thank you again for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you again in the next video.